In this tutorial, you will learn how to run your Spark application from the command line. This is important for two reasons. First, this is the primary method of running a Spark application in production on a real distributed cluster. Second, this is how we will grade your programming assignments in this course. We will run them from command line. As a prerequisite, you need to have a project either in Java or Scala that you can run from IntelliJ. This is further explained in two previous tutorials. In this walkthrough video, we will be working with a Scala project, but doesn't really make any difference. The first step is to package your project in a jar file. To do that, from the command line and end at your project directory, type mvn package. This command will compile your code and produce a jar file under the target directory. At this point, let's try to run this jar file using the Java command. It will fail because your program depends on Spark and Scala libraries that are not part of your jar file. To solve this problem, we need to install Spark binaries and run the jar file inside the Spark environment. Go to spark.apache.org and navigate to download. Choose the latest binary package. You can download the binaries through your browser and extract the compressed file in your home slash applications folder. However, if you are a keyboard person like me, you can do all of that in one command as shown. This is also how you can install Spark on a remote server if you only have terminal access. To finish Spark setup, we will set two environment variables, Spark Home and Path. Set Spark Home to the extracted Spark directory and extend the path environment variable to include Spark Home slash bin. If you run on Ubuntu, add these two commands to home slash dot profile file. But if you run on Mac OS, append the commands to home slash dot z profile. On Windows, you will need to do that from the graphical interface. Copy the full path in which Spark was extracted. Open the start menu and type environment and choose edit environment variables for your account. Create a new environment variable called Spark Home and paste. Then edit the path environment variable and type Spark Home slash bin. To make sure that Spark is correctly configured, run Spark submit dash dash version. You might need to open a new terminal for the new environment variables to take effect. If you run in IntelliJ, you will also need to open a new terminal window. Now you can run your program using this command. Notice how this command runs the jar file inside the Spark environment. This ensures that it will access all the required libraries to run. The class option allows you to choose the main class that you want to run. If your application contains only one main class, you can set it to run by default so that you do not have to type the class name every time you run your application. To do that, edit your POM file and add this section. What this part does, is that it configures the jar plugin to add a manifest file inside your jar file that specifies the main class. After you edit the POM file, create a new jar file by running the same command mvn package again. Now you can run your program using the same command but without specifying the main class. You can still specify the main class in the Spark command. For example, you can have a default main class and other non-default main classes that you can run. Now let's go over some problems that you might have with Windows. When you run your program from the command line, you might get an error message saying Hadoop home and Hadoop.home.dir are unset. To resolve this problem, visit the link provided in this tutorial. Choose the right version of Hadoop, in our case it is version 3. Choose when you tell the exe and download the file. Place the downloaded file under home slash applications slash Hadoop slash bin. After that, add a new environment variable, Hadoop Home, that points to home slash applications slash Hadoop. Now start a new terminal window to apply the changes and it should work correct. If you run from IntelliJ, you might need to restart IntelliJ to reflect the new environment variable. 